floors have been the technical talking point of Formula 1 2021. That's not only in terms of the impact on the competitive order, with low-rate runners Mercedes and Aston Martin suffering, but the proliferation of what has become known as the Z-Floor concept. Alfa Romeo became the latest member of the club by introducing its version of the Z-Floor at the Monaco Grand Prix. That means 9 out of 10 teams, effectively all of them given Haas has no development plans for the year because its full focus is on 2022, now have it. So why did the new regulations lead to the creation of the Z-Floor? How does the design work? And why have the teams who didn't initially hit on the idea pushed so hard to copy it? If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to The Race so you don't miss any of our F1 2021 videos, be they technical or otherwise. And so you're informed the millisecond there's something new to watch, strike the notifications bell. A set of four small but very significant aerodynamic rule changes were introduced this year in order to prevent overloading the Pirelli tyres, which were carried over for a third consecutive season, albeit with some changes to the construction to increase robustness. Of course, if you listen to certain teams, in particular Aston Martin, they will tell you this was only a pretext for a move designed to shake up the competitive order. In addition to a reduction of the width of the downforce producing winglets in the lower part of the rear brake ducts and a shortening of the diffuser strikes, the big change was to the sides of the floor. As well as eliminating the slots in the floor, the FIA mandated a diagonal cut starting from 1,800mm behind the front wheel centreline and running to the rear of the floor. This means that the floor at the back of the car is now 100mm narrower on each side compared to last year. While a straightforward reading of the rules would effectively create a diagonal cut in the floor with a straight edge, the popular solution creates an elongated Z shape. Aston Martin was the first to reveal a Z floor concept on the launch specification of its AMR21. Others were a little more coy about their designs, with Mercedes technical director James Allison saying he did not want to reveal their solution, meaning it launched with the most basic possible straight-edged floor. AlphaTauri and Red Bull took a similarly secretive approach, but all four teams ran with Z-floors in pre-season testing. Alpine introduced its version of the concept at the season opening Bahrain Grand Prix, followed by Ferrari and Williams in a second race at Imola. McLaren followed at race 4 in Spain, followed by Alfa Romeo in Monaco. During that run of races, those who started with the Z-Floor design evolved their concept, notably Aston Martin, which introduced its second iteration of the design on Lance Stroll's car for race 3 in Portugal. With 9 out of 10 teams now in the Z-Floor club, it's clear that this is regarded as the best solution. So given the reduction in the area the floor was designed to cut downforce, why would you want to sacrifice even more of it to create the Z-floor? Well, it's all a question of achieving the right compromise between surface area and ensuring you can seal the underfloor. Because the reduction in floor area has mitigated the downforce producing potential, teams have focused on making the front corner of the floor work harder. Changes to the bargeboard and the outer edge of the first third of the floor have been made to allow this section to work as a diffuser in its own right, scavenging the airflow from underneath that corner section of the floor. Do this successfully, an airflow that goes under the more central section of the floor will be pulled through by the main diffuser at the back of the car. It therefore has further to travel, and to fill up the volume of the diffuser will increase in speed, and in doing so, generate more downforce. Also, getting the diffuser in the low pressure area behind the rear tyres to work as one increases the power of the diffuser and gives you even more downforce. To make this all happen, the outer edges of the floor rearwards of where the rectangular cutout starts to create the Z shape need to be as effectively sealed as possible. If this is not achieved, airflow will simply leak under the floor right up to the rear tyres and fill the diffuser volume, meaning that the airflow coming from the front of the car will travel slower reducing its potential downforce. The race's technical expert Gary Anderson has picked out the Alpha Tauri floor concept as particularly well refined. 
Its array of turning vanes allows it to influence the airflow early, and by doing this, it reduces the airflow that can leak under the floor further rearward. This helps to create vortices to seal the underfloor. The key is ensuring these are consistent and rotate in the correct direction. In the case of the Alpha Tauri, where it comes off the outer corner of the cutout, it needs to be rotating clockwise when viewed from the front of the car, or anti-clockwise relative to the driver. This is why the Z floor is so popular. This design allows space for that vortex to be generated. With a conventional triangular cutout that a straightforward interpretation of the rules creates, the continuous outer edge would disrupt the vortex and break it up even before it has formed. Mercedes and Aston Martin have opted for separate, shorter exit ducts on the front corner. Gary Anderson suggests this is focused on making the underfloor detail work harder and is not utilising the overfloor airflow to improve the performance of the underfloor airflow. This is possibly because they are the two low rake teams. It is possible that with the low rake, the airflow struggles to stay attached all the way from the front of the car, so making the front corner of the car work harder is actually detrimental to the overall floor's performance. Every team has their own interpretation of the Z-Floor concept, which they attempt to optimise to work best with their own car. This means different turning vane details and shapes of the floor, and many teams have experimented with different configurations as they try to make it work. But regardless of the varying details, the Z-Floor is the design that F1 teams have hit upon as the best solution, and all in the first few months of the season. Such is the rate of development in F1 that it doesn't take long for the right idea to be found. And those who don't hit upon the idea initially are quick to integrate the concept into their own cars. Let us know in the comments below what you think of F1's latest development battleground and whose solution you think is best. And if you enjoyed this look at Z-Floors, remember to hit like and subscribe.